I think this we've is ended so this. He's going to pack the court. We have en- no, no, no. Give a list. We have ended this segment. We're going to move on to the second segment. That was really a pr- productive segment, wasn't it? <laughs> Keep yapping, man. The people understand you. <laughs> they sure Forty-seven do. years, you've Je- done nothing. They understand. Oh. All right. The second subject <laughs> is COVID-19, which is an awfully serious subject. So. Let's try to be serious about it. We have had more than 7 million cases of coronavirus in the United States, and more than 200,000 people have died. Even after we produce a vaccine, experts say that it could be months or even years before we come back to anything approaching normal. My question for both of you is, based on what you have said and done so far, and what you have said you would do starting in 2021, why should the American people trust you more than your opponent to deal with this public health crisis going forward? In this case, the question goes to you first, sir. Two minutes uninterrupted. Good luck. 200,000 dead. As you said, over 7 million infected in the United States. We, in fact, have... 5%, 4% 5%, 4% of the world's population, 20% of the deaths. 40,000 people a day are contracting COVID. In addition to that, about between 750 and 1,000 people a day are dying. When he was presented with that number, he said, it is what it is. Well, it is what it is because you are who you are. That's why it is. The president has no plan. He hasn't laid out anything. He knew all the way back in February how serious this crisis was. He knew it was a deadly disease. What did he do? He's on tape as acknowledging he knew it. He said he didn't tell us or give people a warning of it because he didn't want to panic the American people. You don't panic. He panicked. In addition to that, what did he do? He went in and he, we were insisting that the Chinese, the, the people we had on the ground in China should be able to go to Wuhan and determine for themselves how dangerous this was. He did not even ask Xi to do that. He told us what a great job Xi was doing. He said we owe him a debt of gratitude for being so transparent with us. And what did he do then? He then did nothing. He, he waited and waited and waited. He still doesn't have a plan. Well, I laid out sir, back in March. Minutes. Exactly what we should be doing. And I laid out again in July what we should be doing. We should be providing all the protective gear possible. We should be providing the money the House has passed in order to be able to go out and get people the help they need to keep their businesses open. Open schools that cost a lot of money. You should get out of your bunker and get out of the sand trap and get in in your golf course and go in the Oval Office and bring together the Democrats and Republicans and fund what needs to be done now to save lives. So if we would have listened to you. You have two minutes, sir. If we would have listened to you, the country would have been left wide open. Millions of people would have died, not 200,000. And one person is too much. It's China's fault. It should have never happened. They stopped it from going in, but it was China's fault. And by the way, when you talk about numbers, you don't know how many people. You have repeated over and over and over and over again that it's China's fault. But here's the thing. China stopped the spread. China has been able to reopen. The United States is at risk of never having like uh, certain countries let us into their country ever again, or at least for like years. I'm sorry for being like, I'm, I'm, I always exaggerate, but what I'm saying is um, until there's a vaccine that's very proven, some countries are not going to let our people into their country, and we've been kicked out because you didn't do a very good job containing the virus. And you can say whatever you want, but you've done a very bad job leading because you have a lot of people that listen to you and who take what you say seriously, but what you do is you lead them to not take the coronavirus seriously. And you say, oh, well, I didn't want people to get worried. It's like, okay, the problem is people should be worried. And when you're a leader, then you should encourage your people to be worried in a way that helps your society. Like, hey guys, maybe we should all actually be careful about this thing. Maybe we all should say, hey, this is not a normal situation. 
we're going to all stay home for like two years because we know this thing's not going to be gone until we have a vaccine and we know that vaccines are not as easy to come by as everyone acts like they are. But all right, so let's 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 keep going. Because you don't know how many people died in China. You don't know how many people died in Russia. You don't know how many people died in India. They don't exactly give you a straight count, just so you understand. But if you look at what we've done, I closed it, and you said he's xenophobic. He's a racist, and he's xenophobic, because you didn't think I should have closed our country. Wait a minute. minute. Freeze. Okay. The way you close the country is a problem, or was a problem. For example, you said, hey, everyone, we're going to shut down. Everyone rush home and bring the coronavirus home because there was this outbreak in Italy and there was uh, an outbreak in some in in some of the other European countries and what you did is said hey everyone guess what we're gonna close our borders and then everyone rushed home instead of saying okay guys we're gonna actually close our borders and you can't come home temporarily and or if you do come home you're gonna be tracked because there are all these people that came home and I've read about them they went on airplanes, they got home, and they had a little sore throat, and then next thing you know, it turned into the coronavirus, and they weren't even trapped. Because they're because you weren't ready to deal with the people coming home. And so Bill Gates has actually said that one of the biggest problems or one of the biggest reasons that the coronavirus has spread so much in the United States is because of the way you closed the borders. So you're bragging right now, but you actually screwed up. You didn't think I should have closed our country. Wait a minute. It says two minutes. You didn't think we should have closed our country because you thought it was too, it was terrible. You wouldn't have closed it for another two months. By my doing it early, in fact, Dr. Fauci said, President Trump saved thousands of lives. Many of you are Democrat governors said, President Trump did a phenomenal job. We worked with the governor. Oh, really? Go take a look. (laughs) The governors said I did a phenomenal job. Most of them said that.